I've got a new mat on my desk. Don't worry, we're not gonna be top down for the whole video. Today, we're gonna to check out the Cinco Mic D30 and we're actually gonna head outside. So we are coming back to the camera rig to start things up because this microphone is gonna go on here. You can see I've made a couple of changes. For a start, I swapped the desk view out with the Field World F6 Plus, mostly because I wanted to swap out the bracket and I didn't wanna to have to deal with unscrewing it and screwing back in. That's literally the only reason. The Nitsi bracket lets me mount on a NATO rail, which I can mount higher up on the monitor because I needed more clearance in order for the microphone to sit right here in this bit. I've swapped the cable clamp around, it was going up and across now it's going across and then up because i need to access the microphone port hidden underneath there but in order to set up the microphone we need to take this off and this is the other great thing about nato rails i just unscrew this push this button and off it slides and we're done so this is the Cinco mic d30 it's an on-camera mic and it's a powered on-camera mic with a built-in internal battery. Now all I've done with this so far is open it up to charge it because it has a Type-C USB socket right there that you plug into power for charging up the battery. Unfortunately, this does not act as a USB audio interface, which is a little bit disappointing. I, I was kind of hoping that it was. On the back you can see we have a gain dial that rotates steplessly we have two buttons let me take this off we have two buttons right here we have one which is power or the safety channel on and off and we have one which toggles between the 75 hertz low cut filter the 150 hertz low cut filter or no low cut filter this one at the back which is for letting you monitor the audio while it's going into the camera so you just plug your headphones in here and you can listen to it before it goes in the camera. So this is the microphone itself and size wise, it's a little bit big for an on-camera microphone. You're not generally gonna use this for vlogging. If I look at it next to the Rode NTG5, it's actually very, very slightly longer. And this is a microphone that's designed to, you know, go on a boom arm. It comes with a shock mount and it's not a Ryko shock mount like a lot of the other microphones. I'm not sure who makes this, it might be Cinco's own. It, it doesn't feel quite as springy as some other shock mounts that I've used, so we'll, we'll see how well it works and if it gets rid of handling noise. I'm, I'm not a big fan of this double socket design or this double screw design underneath. It's got a cold shoe mount on the bottom. It's like a lot of the other hot shoe adapters where you have one ring to clamp it down on the hot shoe of the camera and then another ring which clamps right underneath the mounting plate for the shock mounts so that you can move it forward and backward on your camera but the problem is these are metal this is metal so it, it doesn't really hold very well it's the same problem we had with the uh the bracket that came with the desri monitor this is the little dead cat that comes with it so we'll see how well that performs against the wind we've got a couple of cables here we have one that's usb to TRRS. So, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could plug this into your phone. The other cable that's included in the box is another type C cable, but this one goes to a TRS three and a half mil plug. And this is for plugging into the microphone socket on your camera. As well as this, we've got a standard type A to type C cable for charging up the internal battery. Now I've already charged up the internal battery. So let's reassemble all this and mount it on top of the camera. So this is why I removed the monitor from uh, the top of the camera so that you can actually see how I'm mounting this. So I'm gonna slide in and screw that down and then we'll unscrew the top one so we can slide this as far back as it can go. Plug this in there and we're all set. Now it's just a case of turning this on with a long press. If I press it again, you get a safety channel. And that basically means that it's recording to both the left and the right channels. And one of them will be a bit quieter than the other. That way, if you're recording a sound and it gets really, really loud, you've hopefully still got it on the safety channel if your main channel has blown out. You have the low cut filter here for 75 hertz, 150 hertz or off so that it just records everything. And then you've got your gain dial here on the back. so you can adjust the level going into the camera. If I turn the microphone off, the microphone is picking up absolutely nothing at all as I talk. If I turn it on, now we have power and there we go. Now you can see that the level indicators are going up as I talk. Well, I guess the only thing to do now is to head outside and test it and see how it sounds. So I will see you out in the middle of nowhere. 
So I thought I'd put my previous comment to the test and I've actually come out with my vlogging setup to have a play with the microphone. I have to stop this here. I was just going to let it play and put a little title over the top, but no, I need to stop this and just quickly explain. There is some rumbling in the early part of this video. I think it's all basically down to handling noise and we'll get back to it later on after we've done the test. So don't worry, it does clear up, but we'll address it later. I'm walking through some really patchy trees right now, so the sun's coming in and out, sorry. But we are gonna head down to somewhere that's pretty open. We shouldn't have any issues with sound reflections. We might get some nice environment noise and we'll see how well the microphone picks that up in the background, if it picks any of it up at all. But I wanna do some distance tests, directional tests. We'll also head down to the river to see how well it cuts off sound to the side while it's picking up my voice. This is also the first time I've come out to vlog with the Panasonic G80, so we'll get to see how good its autofocus is. The other reason I've decided to come out with a vlogging setup rather than the whole cage is that I want to see how well the shock mount does at getting rid of handling noise. So we'll, we'll see if the microphone picks that up and if it's hearing me rubbing the little Manfrotto pixie right now or if it's managing to eliminate that. So I've now set the camera up on the tripod and I'm talking to it. It's facing me dead ahead, as you can see on the little camera down to the side. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate it around in quarter turn increments so that you can see how it sounds from the front, both of the sides and the back. So right now we are on the front access right in front of the microphone. I am gonna turn it 90 degrees to my left, your right. Here we are now at the side of the microphone. I don't know if you can still hear me or not or how well it's cutting me off or what frequencies it's letting through. We're now turning around to the back of the microphone. This in theory should be a little bit stronger than when it's sideways, although it still shouldn't be anywhere near as strong as when it's facing towards me. Now we're turning it 90 degrees the other way. Um, this is from the other side of the microphone. And now we're facing it back towards me. So I'm gonna stay quiet for a minute just so you can hear how much of the ambient noise around me the microphone is picking up. I can hear some little crickets and the river's off there in the distance and not so much wind. <laughs> but I could hear little birds chirping and other things so I'm not sure how much this is gonna pick up. One of the other things that I want to test on this because I've got the microphone's output level set as high as it will go and I've got the camera set to minus 12. It is possible that it's still going to clip somewhat at this level, but the, the levels on the screen look okay. But if I get really, really loud, it might actually start clipping. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna test out the safety channel and I will leave the audio as it's recording in there. Well, that's a good test of the windshield because I've got that sitting on top of the camera. I'm going to turn on the safety channel so that you can hear how it sounds on both channels and if the clipping is at the microphone or if it's at the camera when I start speaking really, really loudly. Alrighty, so now I have the safety channel on. I can see on my LCD that the right channel is significantly louder than the left, which means the right channel is recording me at full volume and the left one is much quieter. I'm going to get really, really loud and a bit closer to the microphone now. Even the quiet channel is getting quite loud, so the other channel might be clipping. So I did turn the audio limiter off in the camera, so the camera should not be trying to prevent it from clipping it should just be recording the straight raw audio with no interference whatsoever um, but this is what it sounds like on the left and right channels with the safety channel on but right i'm going to turn the safety channel off and then we're going to test the 75 and 150 hertz low cut filters right now you're listening to me with the 75 hertz low cut filter enabled i again i've no idea what it sounds like so i'm just going to keep talking i will stay quiet for a few seconds so you can hear how the environment sounds and if it makes a difference And now you're listening to me with the 150 hertz low cut filter enabled. Again, I'm going to stay quiet for a few seconds. But right, I think I'm going to go somewhere with some better lighting because this is horrible and we'll go do some distance tests. So the only bit of shade I can find around here are the trees around the edge of the river. So this is as good a place as any to do the off-axis test to see how good it rejects sound off to the side right now the river it's it's all behind me but like this this part of it's really really quiet 
this part of it's really really loud and it's at about 90 degrees to the microphone that way so if you can hear me over the sound of the river then it's doing pretty good all right now what we'll do is we will turn towards the river and you can see if it's picking it up in the background behind me and how loudly it's doing that so you should be able to hear it clearer than in the last position it was at but it hopefully because of the proximity i'm only this far from the microphone hopefully you should still be picking me up quite nicely and loudly while that should still be fairly quiet even though it's right in front of the microphone and yes i realize this shot's horribly blown out i want to do a distance test so right now i'm about i don't know 40 50 centimeters from the camera i'm going to step back to about a meter sorry wind not me the air so i'm at about half a meter from the camera right now i'm going to step back and then i'm going to keep stepping back um, until I'm about to fall in the river and then I'm not going to fall in the river and I'm going to stop. Right now I'm about one meter away from the microphone. You should still be able to hear me quite well. The wind's really starting to pick up now and there's the river over there. If I need to bump the audio in post for you to be able to hear me, it's obviously going to bump up the noise of the audio coming off to the side from the river. Now I'm about two meters away from the microphone and it, it should still pick me up kind of okay. I will probably really need to bump this up in post in order for you to hear me properly at the same level that you've heard me the other times, uh, which means the river's gonna get much, much louder. Here I am at three meters. Um, I'm not going back any further, otherwise I'm gonna be standing in the river. The further you get from a microphone, the louder you talk because you know you have to send your voice further. But right now I'm just gonna talk at my normal volume. And if you can pick me up over the sound of the river, I will be pleasantly surprised. Uh, I mean, the, the microphone is set to put out its highest, strongest signal, so it, it should still pick me up somewhat, but I am going to have to amplify this in post to get the same level as when I'm half a meter from the camera. So I'm just going to stroke the tripod. Nothing weird about that at all. You might see a little bit of wobble in the camera because I don't have stabilization turned on in the lens. <laughs> but I want to hear if that translates into the microphone. Um, because it shouldn't. The shock mount is supposed to get rid of all that kind of vibration and handling noise. So a couple of things that quite annoy me a little bit about this microphone. Um, it doesn't detect when you turn the camera off, which seems to have started to become the norm in a lot of new microphones. The Rode uh, VideoMic NTG can do it. This one can't. So even when you turn your camera off, your microphone's still on, which means the battery's draining. So you'll want to make sure to turn it off. That also means that when you turn the camera on, the microphone doesn't automatically come on. So if you turn the camera on, forget to turn the microphone on, hit record, you get. So hopefully in a future iteration of this microphone, Synco can figure out a way to get it to detect whether the camera's turned on and off and have the microphone turn on and off automatically with it, the way the Rode VideoMic NTG does. Another thing that's slightly annoying is that the Synco mic, when you set settings like the low cut filters, when you turn the microphone off, it remembers that setting. So when you turn it back on again, if you had the 75 or the 150 Hertz low cut filters on before, they will automatically come back on again. That doesn't seem to happen with the safety channel. If you have the safety channel turned on and then you turn the microphone off, when you turn the microphone back on again, the safety channel isn't there. So again, that's another thing that you have to remember to turn on manually each time you turn on the camera and start recording, which can be quite annoying. But it's not as annoying as all that clipping and wind noise. This is a setup that I was using in the footage you just watched with the microphone just straight on top of the camera either handheld with the little Manfrotto Pixie or sitting on top of the tripod. The clipping was basically down to the fact that the microphone was set all the way to 15 and the Panasonic G8, he won't let me set the input level low enough to prevent it from still blowing out. Although the camera's on-screen level indicators didn't actually indicate that anything was clipping at all. Plugging headphones into the microphone and actually listening to the sound coming out of it while somebody yelled into it presented no clipping at all. It wouldn't be so bad if the microphone remembered the setting for the safety channel when you turned it off because then you'd have your loud channel for more distant noises and the quiet channel for when you're talking to it up close. But it doesn't. I wanted to find out if the mic level being so high was also the main cause of the wind issues, so I dropped the mic level down to 10, kept the camera's input level as low as it would go and headed out again the next day to give it another quick test. So I have come back out again today to do a few more tests with this. I've 
dial the microphone down from its maximum of 15 decibels to 10 decibels and hopefully that should stop it from clipping the way it was yesterday but what i'm really curious about is if the wind is still going to be an issue um i i don't know if the wind was just such a problem yesterday because the level was set so high and this windshield might actually be okay i guess we'll find out uh, i'm still not happy about the shock mount so we'll see how the handling noise is but uh, right now i'm walking across a field and uh, it's definitely breezier than it was yesterday so if wind is going to be a problem this is going to be the test to see as you can hear the wind is still a problem there's really no point playing that video any further dropping the mic output level down to 10 did solve the clipping issue but the windshield that comes with it is basically useless which is a shame when there's no wind and the output level set appropriately, the sound is actually quite clear. But if you were hoping to use this mic on camera for outdoor vlogging, you might be disappointed. Even in a slight breeze, you'll hear it rumble. Perhaps there's a good third party windshield out there that would handle things better. Rycote makes one that should fit, although I've no idea how effective it would be on here. If you're always shooting indoors though, it's a great option for the price and that's how I plan to use this microphone on the cage rig. It won't be my main audio source, but it will serve well to produce a nice clear track that's way better than the internal mics for syncing up in post to a separate audio recording. And that's what I see as the main kind of use case for this microphone is just as a, a decent sync track, basically. For what it costs, it does really, really well for that job. Also, if you're shooting videos like the one you're watching right now, it could actually be a really good microphone to boom overhead. You'd want to get an extension cable for this so that it actually reaches. But if you're always shooting indoors and you know, you just need a microphone that goes into the camera and produces a decent quality sound and there's no wind, then this is ideal. So I think that's it for the Cinco Mic D30 for now. I will probably revisit it at some point in the future as I play more with it and figure out some tricks to get the best quality audio from it. But for now, I think this is gonna do. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. If you have any questions about the Cinco Mic D30 or you want me to do any specific tests or compare it with any of my other microphones, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.